In at 10, Carla Bellucci. 37 year old Carla Bellucci is a former model and is also known as the UK's most hated influencer. And that's because she faked clinical depression to get a free nose job from the NHS, valued at $14,000 US. <laughs> that kind of rhymed. She also bragged about it on this morning and she said she had no regrets. Carla insists that there are other people who are taking advantage of the NHS because of cracks in the system and she was coached on what to say. The NHS doesn't always pay for cosmetic surgery, but there have been instances where they do pay for cosmetic surgery for psychological or health reasons. Bellucci also says that her 90,000 Instagram followers regularly send her gifts, and she even tried to crowdfund a $30,000 Brazilian butt lift. That one didn't really work out though, ever since the truth about her came out. In at number 9, Aga Brzezostowska. Aga, who's known online as Alicia, is 20 years old and Polish born. From her Instagram photos, she appears to be black. But when a photo of her when she was 13 went viral, showing much lighter skin and a much thinner body, she was accused of blackfishing and cultural appropriation. So blackfishing is a term to describe people who pose as black or mixed race on social media by using makeup, hair products, and sometimes even surgery. Alicia describes herself as being olive skin and denies the accusations of cultural appropriation. She simply likes fake tanning. A lot. But that is not all. She also sports cornrows on a regular basis. You can't deny how different she looked when she was 13, and many have accused her of getting surgery so she looks more like a black woman. Alicia is a micro influencer with about 25,000 followers, but she has received free clothes and products in exchange for posts. She denies getting surgery to change her body, and she also denies being white. <laughs> At number eight on our list, Rob Vanna. Yovana Mendoza, aka Rob Vanna, is a YouTuber famously known for being a vegan. She regularly posts content about her vegan lifestyle. Well, she used to anyway. She had a devoted fan base who would turn to her for tips and inspiration, and she has 1.2 million followers on Instagram. That number actually used to be 1.3 million followers because back in March of 2019, she was exposed after she was seen in another blogger's video eating fish. How dare you! How dare you eat fish? Yovana finally came clean in a 33 minute YouTube video where she tries to explain herself, stating that veganism has been detrimental to her health. She began to lose her menstrual cycles, she was fatigued, and her doctor told her that she had to eat eggs and meat. She was forced to abandon her vegan diet after six years and started eating fish and eggs. Since the scandal broke, she's changed her name to Yovana and not Ravana because that would imply she eats a raw diet. You get what I'm saying. At seven, Emily Ratajkowski. <laughs> Emily Ratajkowski and her millionaire husband were exposed by their landlord because apparently they don't pay rent. <laughs> what? They live for free in their NoHo loft in New York thanks to a legal loophole meant to protect struggling artists. Her husband, filmmaker Sebastian Blair McClaird, is worth an estimated $12 million, but apparently he owes his landlord $120,000 because he and his wife are exploiting the loft law, which helps struggling artists and low-income families in need of affordable housing by preventing landlords from kicking them out if they live illegally in commercial loft spaces. This law has been in place since 1982, but as you can probably tell, one of the most famous supermodels in the world and her millionaire husband are not struggling artists. To make matters worse, their landlord reports that they regularly have loud parties until the wee hours of the morning, making it difficult for their neighbors to get a good night's sleep. After the news broke, Emily's comment section on Instagram was filled with nasty remarks from people who are urging her to just like, yo, pay your rent, dude. In at number six, we got Lisa Lee, the woman who inspired this list. Love you, Lisa. Lisa Lee is a Weibo influencer from China who often flaunts her lavish lifestyle online, as most influencers do. But the problem is, she was like cropping out what her apartment really looked like. Lisa Lee made international news in September of 2019 after her former landlady gave a guided tour of her former apartment. The place was covered in dog excrement, garbage, dust, and it pretty much looked like a landfill. Lisa's landlord felt compelled to expose Lisa for who she really is after Lisa moved out of her property without paying bills, and also apparently without cleaning. After several failed attempts to call her, Lisa's landlady basically had enough and she wanted to show the world what her former tenant was really like. Her apartment was so disgusting that professional cleaners refused to touch it. Like not even with like rubber gloves, dude. That's saying something. It's like radioactive. Miraculously, Lisa came out of hiding and returned to thousands upon thousands of messages from angry fans who called her a phony. Lisa did end up apologizing to her landlady. She paid her back the unpaid utility costs and also posted a video that shows her cleaning her gross flat. Sweeping up the dog poo. 
By that time though, it was already too late. Halfway there now at number 5, Your Highness Xiao Bi Lu. This influencer was a live streamer from China who's known for her sweet and healing voice. She had many generous followers, close to a million of them on Do You, who donated more than $15,000 to her just to watch her. She has the appearance of a young, vivacious woman. But it turns out that she was using a filter all along. A glitch revealed that she's actually a 58 year old woman. That's awkward. Needless to say, she lost a ton of followers who were mostly men. Live streaming is a very lucrative business in China. There are around 425 million live streamers who commonly use face filters. They make money by singing karaoke, talking, or eating. <laughs> but because many of them use face filters, you never know what a live streamer really looks like. So best keep your money in your pockets. At number 4 we've got Caroline Calloway. Caroline Calloway is an American influencer with about 800,000 Instagram followers who found fame through her clever captions and by using the hashtag AdventureGram. But it turns out that her huge following might be totally fake. In a tell all essay written by Caroline Calloway's ex best friend, Natalie Beach, she was exposed for taking out ads designed to look like posts to promote her Instagram. And she bought tens of thousands of fake followers to make it seem like she had a way bigger following than she actually had. But that's not all Caroline was lying about. Natalie Beach claims that she helped Caroline write her always witty and hilarious captions and almost half of her proposal for her unwritten memoir. The story goes that Caroline was told by literary professionals that no one would ever buy a memoir from someone with no following and no claim to fame. That's fair enough. So she went ahead and she created the fame herself. She ended up landing a $375,000 book deal and got $500,000 in advance to write her memoir about being an influencer. She never credited her friend Natalie for doing a huge chunk of the writing for her. Gotta hand it to Caroline. She fooled everyone, but she never went ahead with her book deal. She's widely known now as a scammer and she owes her publisher over $100,000. Getting close now at number 3, Tana Mojo. Tana Mojo, aka YouTube's queen of clout, recently married fellow clout chaser Jake Paul in a lavish wedding in Las Vegas. After the wedding, there were a lot of people coming out of the woodwork to say that the wedding was kind of fake. First of all, it wasn't registered in the state of Nevada where the wedding took place, so there's your first red flag. Big, big red flag. Also, the couple didn't leave their wedding together either. Kind of weird. So that's another red flag. At the time, Tana took to Twitter to shut down rumors about her wedding being fake. But a few days later, she actually admitted that the whole thing was a sham in an episode of her YouTube show, Tana Turns 21. She said, I quote, I think we are all trying to piece together the puzzles of what we actually want this engagement and marriage to be. I have a lot of love for him, but it's still something fun and lighthearted that we're obviously doing for fun and content. I mean, obviously you're just doing it for fun and content. So when Tana admitted this, people were pretty angry about it. A lot of people paid a lot of money to watch that wedding. I think it was like $50 or something to stream it. So Tana went on Twitter to explain herself. She said, I understand people's frustrations with the soundbite from the show and it's the last thing I want to talk about right now but obviously I just uploaded an 8 minute YouTube video on how much I love Jake and I'm not trying to look like that much of a sociopath. In further tweets she basically said that the soundbite from the MTV show was taken out of context and she didn't actually admit that her marriage was fake. So she still wants people to believe that she and Jake Paul are married. I highly doubt that. And at our number 2 spot, Danielle Kahn. <sighs> Danielle. We couldn't do a list like this without featuring Danielle Kahn. With 3.7 million followers on Instagram and 1.5 million subscribers on YouTube, Danielle Kahn is probably one of the best known controversial social media influencers in the world. And that is because, for a long time, no one knew her real age. She claimed online that she was 15 years old, but there were numerous YouTube videos made to expose her real age, which is actually 13. Then recently, Danielle Cohn's own father came forward to expose the truth about Danielle's real age because he was worried about her safety. But Danielle's age is not the only part about her that she's faking to get attention. Oh shit, I went there. Danielle Kahn has faked her marriage to Mikey Tua as well as a pregnancy in 2019, and she admitted that it was just for fun. And are you ready for number one? We got Miss Lil Tay. Oh, girlfriend, I haven't talked about Lil Tay in a minute. I kind of miss Lil Tay. Oh, you guys. Okay, so if you don't know who Lil Tay is, she was a foul mouth child rapper and internet star that shot to stardom on Instagram because she would swear and use the N word. <laughs> she had more than a million followers on the platform who would make jokes out of trolling her videos where Lil Tay would pose as this like rich nine year old girl. She'd throw $100 bills at the camera, use racial slurs, sit in Lambos, and show off her impressive living quarters. How did a nine year old pretend rapper afford those dope apartments? Well, it turns out that online persona was all just a cash grab. 
Her older brother was the mastermind behind Little Tay, and he would be directing her when the cameras weren't rolling. She staged fake fights with fellow internet flexer Bad Baby and Will Vicky. The lavish apartments she was showing off, yeah, it turns out that her mother is a real estate agent in Vancouver, and she would let her daughter use her expensive listings in her videos. Oh yeah, and she she got in trouble for that too, apparently. Little Tay actually ended up deleting her social media after her father intervened. He disapproved of Little Tay's online persona and got rid of it for good. No one knows what Little Tay is up to now, but I'm assuming she's living a normal life under strict adult supervision. In a 10, Casey Sosnowski. Now this one isn't a big deal to me, which is why it isn't higher on our list, but it's a prime example of how easy it is for an influencer to flex on you and make you feel bad about your own lack of whatever. An Instagram influencer called Casey Sosnowski posted this photo of herself hiking with the caption, nature is the ultimate healer to all our problems, hashtag nature lovers. It appears like she's hiking through the woods, wearing athletic gear, being all active and Photos like this make me feel fat and boring. But it turns out that Casey's photo shoot was totally staged. She wasn't hiking in the woods, she was next to some trees in her own backyard. Casey was exposed by her own sister on Twitter. Here's the tweet. My sister says that she was going hiking. This is our backyard. This little tweet made Casey go viral, but she didn't really get upset about being called out. Don't you just love siblings? The photo is still up on her Instagram, only now the caption says, did I go hiking? No. Is this my backyard? Maybe. Well played Casey, well played. In at number 9, Amelia Leanne. Anna. Amelia Liana was a famous travel blogger who would post pictures of herself in front of iconic destinations. She has hundreds of thousands of Instagram followers who enviously look at her seemingly amazing lifestyle. I mean, getting to travel anywhere you want is pretty much everyone's dream life. But Amelia was actually exposed back in July of 2017 thanks to one photo that shows her in front of the New York skyline with the caption, what a welcome to NYC, hashtag top of the rock. This photo made it seem like she was standing at the top of the Rockefeller Center which overlooks the New York skyline. I actually prefer going to Rockefeller over the Empire State Building when I'm in New York because you can actually get a view of the Empire State Building. Way better for photos. But Amelia Liana wasn't at the top of the rock. In reality, she was probably in front of a green screen. How did people know this? Because she used a stock image of the Empire State Building that didn't have the Freedom Tower in it. Once she was exposed for this picture, people started to pick apart every single one of her photos. And it just seems like she's taking photos of herself and then just superimposing pictures of iconic destinations. This is actually pretty easy to do with Photoshop. You just need a well lit sharp image of yourself and then you need a sharp image of the background. You can stitch the photos together quite easily. Pop on a filter and boom, the more you know. Sliding into number 8 we got Johanna Olsen. Johanna has 533,000 Instagram followers and she's also a travel blogger. Honestly I'm looking at her feed and it's like damn she really does have the perfect life doesn't she? But is it real? Well some photos are probably real but there are many that are faked. They are too good to be real. Johanna was exposed back in December of 29 for superimposing herself in front of iconic travel spots in Paris. If you look closely at her photos, many of them have pretty bad stitching. She responded to the criticism online and said that she really was at those iconic Parisian spots, but she took separate photos, one of the background and one of her, and then stitched them together. This was one of her captions where she admitted to it. Guys, I was in Paris at this restaurant. They seated me at a table with no view. I really wanted a picture with the best view to get that perfect Paris vibe to inspire you guys. So instead of complaining to the staff about but where they seated me, I simply took a picture of the background that I wanted from a better table and photoshopped it. Really? To inspire me? Or to make it seem like you have a way better life than you do? Guys, come on, Instagram is not real. Nothing is real. <laughs> At number seven, Whoa Vicky. Whoa Vicky, AKA Victoria Waldrip, is an Instagram star based out of Atlanta who has famously claimed to be African American, yet she's very white. Her videos also make a mockery of African American slang and lifestyle. But Whoa Vicky's been exposed time and time again for being nothing more than an actress who's really good at making funny videos. Whoa Vicky is a character. She's been caught on camera breaking character many times. Furthermore, Vicky claims to be from a poor background, essentially from the hood, when it turns out that Victoria Waldrip is the daughter of successful home building entrepreneur Steve Waldrip. She did not grow up living in poverty, she grew up a privileged white girl. Regardless, Whoa Vicky is breaking it in. She likely has a multi million dollar deal with fashion. Nova because she's often repping their brand in her posts. Do you guys remember those free iPhone videos too? Oh my god, they were so annoying. I am so glad she stopped that. Regardless, I actually think she's pretty funny, but she's still offensive. In at 6, <laughs> Tiffany Mitchell. Tiffany Mitchell is a lifestyle blogger with 215,000 followers. Back in August of 2019, she came under fire for staging a motorcycle accident for likes. I mean, it's pretty weird that she took beautiful photos of a pretend motorcycle accident that show her lying on the road and being rescued by some male model that just happened to be there. 
there. <laughs> so Tiffany said at the time that she did get into a motorcycle accident two weeks before the post. She said it was a very traumatic experience that left her shaken up. She also said she was thrown off her bike and helped by strangers. At first the post got a ton of nice get well soon comments and thousands upon thousands of likes. But then the mean comments started rolling in. It was all too convenient. How is it that she so happened to have a photographer on hand to take stunning photographs of her motorcycle accident? She was also wearing completely inappropriate clothing for riding a motorcycle. And her motorcycle was standing up in the photos. To make matters worse, there was a conveniently placed smart water bottle in some of the photos, leading some people to believe that it was a paid sponsorship done in very poor taste. Tiffany defended herself and said she didn't know that her photographer was taking photos of her, and maintains to this day that the post she made was well intentioned. Halfway there now at number 5, L. Darby. This scandal changed the way influencers approach brands forever. So back in January of 2018, the owner of the White Moose Cafe in Dublin, Paul Stenson, posted an email sent to him from L. Darby, but her name was redacted. It read as follows. Hi there. I hope this email finds you well. I'm emailing in regards to a possible collaboration on social media. My name is blank. I work as a social media influencer, mainly lifestyle, beauty, and travel based. She goes on to say that her and her partner are planning a trip to Dublin for an early Valentine's Day weekend, and she asks for a free stay at the White Moose Cafe Hotel in exchange for posts on social media. Now I know a lot of influencers who do this. They reach out to brands they like, and then they share their media kit, etc. This is how you start brand relationships. But the way Elle went about this, is pretty unprofessional. When she was denied her request, she wrote negative reviews on their Facebook page and then made a YouTube video where she played the victim, alleging that the White Moose Cafe exposed her with malicious intent, yet they never shared her name in the post. The White Moose Cafe is also not a big company, it's a small business that can't afford to give an influencer a free stay in their hotel. Needless to say, the owner of the White Moose Cafe was absolutely livid, yo, and he banned all bloggers from his hotel. In a Facebook post, Paul Stenson said, the sense of entitlement is just too strong in the blogging community and the nastiness, hissy fits, and general hate displayed after one of your members was not granted her request for a freebie is giving your whole industry a bad name. I never thought I would be inundated with negative reviews for the simple reason that somebody was required to pay for goods received or services rendered. In at 4, Logan Paul. Back in November of 2016, Logan Paul posted a video called These Glasses Cured My Color Blindness. It has 28 million views at the time of this recording. In the video, he says that he bought special glasses, endochroma glasses, that miraculously allowed him to see color. Logan got a lot of hate for this video and people went on reddit to expose him for lying about being colorblind. There are actually a lot of people who are affected by colorblindness, particularly men. First of all, endochroma glasses do not work instantly, you gotta wear them for at least 15-20 to 20 minutes. Yet Logan Paul reacted to seeing colors almost instantly after putting the glasses on. And they don't cure colorblindness, they just enhance certain colors. Logan Paul actually ended up admitting in another video, the truth about my colorblindness, that he quote, embellished a lot of what he said for views. He said he exaggerated his reactions in order to create an amazing piece of content that showed what it means to be colorblind. Right. <laughs> Getting close now at number 3, Lil Bow Wow. Oh Lil Bow Wow aka Shad Moss, Lil Bow Wow was everywhere in the 90s. But lately things haven't been as poppin' for Shad. Back in 2017, he posted this photo on Instagram of a private jet with the caption, Travel Day, NYC press run for growing up hip hop. Let's go. Sounds like Landon. <laughs> Pretty standard celebrity flex if you ask me, so most people didn't think anything of it. Of course, until someone who was on a standard commercial flight at the same time as Lil Bow Wow posted this tweet. So this guy Lil Bow Wow was on my flight to New York. But on Instagram, he posted a picture of a private jet captioned, traveling to New York today. It turns out that the photo that Lil Bow Wow posted was actually a stock photo of a private plane used by a Fort Lauderdale limousine company. Bow Wow saved the image, put on a filter, then posted it to Instagram. This little stunt actually started a challenge. It was called the Bow Wow Challenge, where people would post photos with seemingly glamorous representations of their posh lifestyles, and then they also showed the harsh reality in the second picture. In at 2, Trisha Paytas. I honestly don't know why Trisha wasn't on my first list, but she made it to the top of this one, so here we go. Trisha Paytas has been exposed time and time again for pretending to be something that she's not. She's literally made a living off of Crying Wolf. Just in the last few years, Trisha has announced that she's gay, bisexual, and most recently she announced that she identifies as a transgender man. The same Trisha Paytas who says that she identifies as a chicken nugget. <laughs> Trisha was epically exposed in 2019 by Ethan Klein of H3H3 on his podcast where he called her out for her excessive use of Photoshop, saying that it was harming young girls. Trisha was the main focal point of H3H3's video, Instagram vs Reality, where he would show edited pictures of Trisha next to photos that show her real face, and she looks pretty much unrecognizable and not like the same person at all. Trisha lost thousands of followers and subscribers over the H3H3 feud, and her antics constantly earn her the reputation of being someone who just lies for attention. I mean, 
Now, in all fairness, she's pretty good at it, isn't she? And at number one on our list, Sarah McDaniel. Sarah McDaniel is a model who's different from other models. She's got one blue green eye and one brown eye. This condition is called heterochromia. It's a rare condition that can result in abnormal irises. Kate Bosworth is a good example of a celebrity who has heterochromia. Sarah says that she was bullied growing up for her condition, which has now become her calling card. But guess what? She doesn't have heterochromia and has exposed for faking the condition. We know this because Sarah's eye color changes. Sometimes it's a darker shade of blue, and other times it's a bright turquoise. And you can also clearly see her contacts in many close up photos. Oh, yeah, and the Instagram account Celebface has posted a photo of her when she was a child where she has two matching brown irises. Sarah McDaniel has represented many brands. She's been a Playboy cover model. Her different colored eyes are a marketing tool for herself. She's that poor girl that was bullied growing up who now has made her abnormality a career. But it's all a sham. When the former Playboy creative director found out that Sarah McDaniel was not who she claimed to be, a down to earth girl with authenticity, he was not pleased. Mac Lewis said at the time, the whole thing around the rebrand was literally to get rid of retouching and have a model who was more natural looking and authentic. That's the reason she was picked. Also saying that Sarah McDaniel undercut everything they'd been saying about her. Nevertheless, Sarah McDaniel continues to masquerade as someone she's not, arguing that her eyes look different in different types of light. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> you can clearly see from this photo here though that that's a lie. There are even entire Instagram accounts made to expose her, like Sarah McDaniel lies. <laughs> There's so much to this story and I'm going to give you guys every single intimate detail of it on this specific case, this specific instance, and we're going to talk a little bit about Jake Paul and who he is as a person. Obviously living in LA and being in the scene, you see a lot of things behind closed doors that you don't see on camera. Nobody can play themselves better than Shad Moss can play himself. If there's one thing on this planet Shad Moss is good at, it's playing himself. Coming in at number 10, we got Dan Bilzerian. This guy is the epitome of a bro. Always surrounded by girls, jacked out of his mind, with tons of money. It seems like if a frat could be morphed into a person, it'd be Dan. But it seems when Dan first came onto the scene, people thought the playboy was a big shot poker player who was completely self-made. After a few months of his charades, it was then revealed he made his fortune because his dad was actually quite well off. Long story short, because it is quite a long story, Dan's father, Paul Bilzerian, has done some shady things in the past. He allegedly owes the government tens of millions of dollars, but simply doesn't have the money to pay them. He's been in jail before for fraud, and has been in a legal battle for decades. Although Dan has admitted his father somewhat helped him get his start, he claims he's made majority of his money playing poker. We're talking an easy 50 million, which, I mean, okay, if you say so. I'm sure he's a good poker player, but like, if you're making an easy 50 million, wouldn't that make you one of the best in the world? Like, shouldn't you be competing at the World Series of Poker every year and winning it? I don't know, just a thought. Coming to number nine, Jay Alvarez. I feel like Jay was one of the first real influencers in the game, at least that I was aware of. For those of you who don't know who Jay is, he was dating Alexis Red. The two of them seemed to travel the world together and were the best looking couple known to the human race. All kidding aside, it seemed like their life was perfect until it wasn't. They had a pretty rough breakup, deleted all their pictures together, which at the time was majority of their Instagram feeds, and then the truth came out. Red claimed that the relationship was extremely unhealthy, even though they seemed to be endlessly in love in every photo, and that Jay was emotionally abusive, especially about her weight, so maybe he isn't the dream guy every girl wished they had, even though it may seem that way. Which she gives me a chance because it's not all about looks, guys. Apparently, Jay's an a I'm not. Yeah, I am. And at number eight, we got fitness influencer Shan Heffley. This man actually exposed himself for the greater good, of course. Heffley is jacked, no doubt about that. But like all influencers, he too tends to edit most of his posts. Whether it's to make his muscles look more defined or to add some coloring to his photos, he's guilty as we all are. But Shan decided one day he was going to show the real him, so he uploaded a photo side by side on his Instagram. On one side was the original photo with the text, no edit captioned. On the other side was a clearly edited photo where Shan looks much more defined, captioned, edited. The photo itself had a nice heartfelt caption as well, talking about how he edits his photos because he's an artist and enjoys creating. He caps it off with, remember as you look through your Instagram feed and compare yourself to other bodies 99% of the time, that's not how they look in real life. That is very true. I edit my stuff on Instagram, I won't lie. I mean, I make myself like a little more tan sometimes, but other than that, I make like colors pop, I guess, but I'm not that much of a, I don't make my muscles more defined because I'm already jacked. Not nah, joking. At number seven, we got Hush Puppy. One of Nigeria's biggest influencers got exposed by one of his closest friends. Another influencer who goes by the name of Mumfa claimed Hush Puppy, who's known for flaunting his luxurious lifestyle on Instagram, wearing only designer and standing in front of luxurious cars, was a fake. Mumfa called out Hush Puppy, who's a self proclaimed billionaire, saying he doesn't have the money he acts like he has. 
His father is a cab driver, his mother is a baker, and when he came to Dubai, Hush Puppy had to stay with Mumfa because he couldn't afford to stay anywhere. Hush Puppy was also making headlines regarding a scam that people claimed he was a part of. But it seems as of now, Mumfa is dealing with some legal troubles himself and got his Instagram account deactivated. So I guess what goes around comes around? I don't really know. Because I mean, he kind of exposed Hush Puppy for being like a fake, but I don't know, like, is he a fake or does he have money? Who knows, really? He looks rich. In at number six, we got TBH Byron. Byron Denton is the man's name, and he's an influencer that actually did a social experiment. He faked being on a private jet going to the Louis Vuitton store, you know, the common influencer stuff. And the photos were incredibly well edited, to the point that some of Byron's family and friends were questioning where he suddenly obtained his newfound fortune. However, it was all for a YouTube video for Byron to pretty much expose how easy it is to be an influencer. While he was posting these photos, he claimed his engagement shot up with his comments and likes hitting numbers he'd never seen before previously. We're talking like four figures. Which like might not seem a lot, but like, I don't know, I think a thousand likes is crazy. Coming in at number five, we got Jake Paul. Seems like this guy tends to make every list one way or another. Jake lied and accused FaZe Banks of assaulting his assistant at a club. The story here was Jake and a few Team 10 members, including assistant Meg, says that Banks clotheslined her and left a bruise on her neck. Initially, FaZe apologized, saying he didn't remember even seeing her, but if he did do that, he's sorry. Then Jake and some Team 10 members dropped a video, manipulating FaZe's DMs and making it seem like Banks was the one who reached out to apologize in the first place. Banks then had some friends come forward and explain what happened, which poked holes in the Team 10 story. Jake then backtracked and the two of them decided to handle their business off of YouTube. I'm gonna say they settled on an arrangement for Banks to get paid because he was going to sue Jake for defamation among other stuff. But I just watched a video of them like together like hanging out, so I guess they said they squashed the beef in the video. I don't really understand what this whole YouTube drama is. Maybe it was all fabricated for views. I really don't know. So remember guys, you can't trust everything you see on the internet. I'm not this ugly in person. In at number four, Cole Kerrigan, or is it Carrigan? I never really know how to say the guy's name. Now this guy is really a piece of work. Cole accused Austin McBroom of the Ace family of some very heavy accusations. We're talking about assault, but it wouldn't be long before the truth really came out. Now I will say we still don't know what actually happened, but what I do know is Cole posted a video dropping these accusations on Austin. Then there were text messages sent from Cole to one of the alleged victims, with Cole literally saying the Ace family has a lot of money, so they'll pay him to keep his mouth shut and he'll split the money with the alleged victims. Buddy, it's just such a bad look, I just, just don't do that. I certainly hope the allegations aren't true. I'm sure the matter is being handled outside of YouTube as it should, but Cole lost a lot of credibility following that incident. Number three, another beautiful day. This is a joint Instagram account featuring Catalin Onk and Elena Engelhart. God damn, these names are so hard to say. They got photos of the two of them looking all lovey-dovey in Bali, France, Italy, you know, the classic influencer spots. It looked like they got paid to travel the world and live the best life ever. You know, classic influencer lifestyle. Then they posted a GoFundMe campaign to raise about 10,000 euro for their next trip. That seemed kind of odd. Then they shared the campaign on Facebook where they explained they don't work and Ankh's mother works two jobs to fund their trips. Their plan definitely didn't work out in their favor and they lost a ton of respect with most comments involving donating money to help the guy's mother instead. Side note guys, maybe don't believe everything you see on Instagram. People's lives really aren't all that great all the time and that's just the way it goes. I also don't know if I said Bali right. Maybe I said it wrong. Is it Bali? No, it's Bali. I went to Bali. Bali, I think it's Bali. I don't know. I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments. In at number two, Bow Wow. I mean, how can we forget about the Bow Wow challenge? For those of you guys that don't remember, Bow Wow posted a photo to his Instagram of a private jet and a few Mercedes parked in front of that jet. He made it seem like that was his plane and he was traveling to New York for his next show in style. Until he wasn't. Turns out the photo he used was from the header of a website, and someone actually took a Snapchat photo of Bow Wow sitting on the same plane as him. This quickly took the internet by storm, with people all over doing the Bow Wow challenge. They'd pretty much manipulate a photo to make it look like something else, and then show a second photo of what's really happening. Just be real guys, some people might hate you, but at least you can't get exposed if you're just, if you're just genuine and truthful. Like, I won't lie, I'm a little different on camera, but for the most part, if you met me in person, you'd be like, oh, you're pretty much the same guy. I talk a little different on camera, like more energetic and shit, but I'm not gonna be like, and at number one, of course, that's boring. No one wants to see that. And in at number one, of course, he's going to top off our list, Takashi69. I mean, are you guys really surprised he's on this list? You probably are. For those of you who need their memory refreshed, Takashi69 pretty much built his career pretending to be a part of the Bloods in New York City. He'd include real members of the gang in his music videos, start online beef with other rappers claiming they aren't real like him, and pretty much portrayed that he was a true member of the Bloods. And then he got arrested and the truth came out. He fully admitted he wasn't a part of the Bloods, he was paying for them to protect him and help his street credit, and pretty much give him the career he had. And now that he's exposed who knows how many of these guys, I really fear for his life. But I mean, I don't know, you play with fire, like you're gonna get burned, you know? So if something does happen to him, don't be too surprised. I'm not saying I hope something happens to him. I never wish harm on anybody. Oh, there's a couple of people actually. You gonna sit down? 
Okay. Let me know what you want, bro. Dude, I'm gonna sink go? it. Let me know when you're done, bro. Glasses uh, that are gonna cure my color blindness for the first time in my life. I identify with men better. I always, people always think like there's something wrong with me because I don't have like that many girlfriends. Like, I love girls. Number 10. Do you guys remember when he posted a video titled These Glasses Cured My Color Blindness? That was the name of it. I'm not, I'm not making words up. In the video, he faked or embellished as he called it, being able to see all colors for the first time by putting on a pair of glasses. It turns out he could actually see all colors, but has trouble seeing green and red when they're together. IDUP CV and Ethan Klein from H3H3 made a video together mocking Paul and pretty much exposing him, to which Paul made a follow up video saying, I quote, I wanted to create an amazing story, an amazing piece of content that showed what it means to be colorblind. Just like any storyteller, I exaggerated my reactions. I did not lie. What I did do is embellish. You heighten the circumstances and make it a little bit more fun, but there is a core and truth to it. I mean, hey, that's YouTube for you, right? At number nine, we got Brooke Houts. Houts was actually exposed by herself when she accidentally uploaded the wrong version of her video to YouTube. In the unedited version of her video, which she took down not long after accidentally posting, Brooke can be seen shoving, hitting, and spitting on her dog. What a gross human being. The clip soon went viral on Twitter with the LAPD actually opening an investigation based off of the video. Now it's one thing to discipline your dog or punish it when it does something bad. You yell at it maybe, wave your finger, sure. But this dog just literally wanted to show some affection to this woman and because it interrupted her making a YouTube video, she lost it. I mean, what kind of dog owner is that? My dog always drives me crazy. He pisses me off, but I would never hit him, ever. He even bit my face once. True story, still didn't hit him. I just screamed at the top of my lungs. Got really scared, so obviously did the trick. But I didn't have to like physically harm him. He never bit me again, actually. Coming at number eight, the Ace Family. Now, as of late, there have been tons of accusations against the Ace Family's daddy, Austin McBroom. Why did I call him daddy, huh? Cole Kerrigan has accused him of some pretty serious stuff, although Austin is denying the claims and allegedly suing Cole for extortion. Regardless of these allegations, it seems Austin has been seen out on the town with numerous women. Some claim he's a cheater, I don't think so. What I think is possible is that Austin and Catherine might have an open relationship. I mean, Austin isn't a low key guy by any means. He's got tons of jewelry on, always dresses and designer clothing. He's got a big blue Rolls Royce. People know when he's around. Yet, there seems to be tons of pictures and videos of him talking to girls in the club, hands around their waist. You guys get the idea here. Which means the Ace family is probably just a perfect family while the cameras are rolling. Behind the scenes, it's probably a family where the parents are in an open relationship. And really there's nothing wrong with that, as long as he's not doing it behind her back, which he clearly isn't because he's not trying to hide much. I mean, there's been countless photos and videos of him out with other girls, so I'm sure Catherine sees this. In at number seven, Kobe Person. Now, it seems most prank channels on YouTube are fake, if not all. I don't want to say all, but I'd say at least 85 or 90% of them are fake for sure. Person was exposed for having a handful of his social experiments and pranks be proven as fake. An example would be his infamous video of when he did a photo shoot on a BMW i8 that was smashed with a bat by an angry New Yorker. Turned out to be fake because the angry New Yorker was caught in Kobe's Snapchat story earlier that day. Another example would be his dangers of social media video. The prank reviewer exposed the social media video by finding out who the mother in the video was. An actor named Stacy Kessler, whose daughter is also an actor and played the little girl in the video. Yet Kobe still went on a handful of news outlets claiming his video was made to raise awareness of the real dangers of social media for young children. Even if that was his intention, he played it off like the video was real. That ain't cool. Coming in at number six, Trisha Paytas. Some lover, some hater. Aside from her obviously fake Instagram account where she clearly photoshops all of her videos, as proven by Ethan from H3H3, she recently made a video claiming she's transgender. Now maybe she's ignorant, maybe she's dumb, or maybe she just wants people talking about her. But she claimed to be transgender because, according to her, she's basically a gay man who likes to dress in drag. She explains, I identify with men better. People always think there's something wrong with me because I don't have that many girlfriends, but I do love girls. I love their sensitivity, and all the stuff like that. That's why I identify more as a gay man, because I like guys, but I also identify as a guy. Now, of course, she received a ton of backlash from people all over, especially because she said she identifies as her natural born gender. Even if we forgive her for this one for not being educated, she still fakes almost all of her Instagram posts, as pointed out by Ethan. So, I guess pick your poison. Number five, Danielle Kahn. Ah, this girl. She's a girl. Yet the 13 year old pretended to be 16. She also pretended to get married, pretended to be pregnant. It's a wild ride with this one. Let's not forget though, guys, YouTube is an entertainment 
entertainment based website. Think of it like reality TV I guess. I mean her audience is mostly young girls so she's not setting the best example and she fully does lie about a handful of things only to defend herself by claiming for example she didn't get legally married but was still titled best friends for life or some BS like that. But when her dad exposed her real age with a birth certificate she fully denied that that was real. I mean who do we believe guys the 13 year old YouTuber or the father of this 13 year old YouTuber with a legal document from the government. I'm not even trying to talk about her. It's YouTube. It's entertainment. Let her make money. You know you guys all watch Keep It Up The Kardashians and that's total BS so who are you to judge? I don't though so I can judge. Although I do watch the NFL and we all know that's rigged thanks to these awful referees so <laughs> shots fired pow pow. Moving on to number 4 Jake and Tana. I mean team 10 is funded by one of the members dads who's a multimillionaire. but we're not talking about that. We're talking about this whole wedding thing. Jake and Tana claimed they were getting married and there just so happened to be a fight at this totally legit wedding but then it turned out there was no marriage certificate. Tana even admitted that they aren't legally married on paper but they're in a relationship and happy together. Which is all that really matters guys. Although it seems like an open relationship. I mean after their wedding they were seen leaving with their own entourages and Jake was filmed in a hotel room with a bunch of women possibly strippers. I don't know. It's you two. Don't ask questions. Just watch it and enjoy I guess. Number 3 we got McJugger Nuggets. I said it right this time. If you guys don't get the joke stick around after for the comments and it'll make a lot more sense. Either way this guy literally faked his life for a good at least 3 years maybe more 4 or 5 I don't even know. Although he didn't ever claim necessarily that it was real but people definitely believed it was. Real name Jesse Ridgeway McJug. Can I call him that or have to keep saying McJugger Nuggets? I don't know. He made videos for a popular series called Psycho Family. In these videos Jesse would get into heated arguments with his father such as flipping tables at a Thanksgiving dinner and his dad running over his video games with a lawnmower after throwing his Xbox in their pool. Again, he didn't really fake anything because he never claimed it was real, but he also never admitted it was fake until years later. And while it was happening, everyone thought it was legit. So take it for what you will. Either way, the guy's a genius when it comes to making content. And his name is Mick Jugger Nuggets, not Mick Jugger Nuts. Coming to number two, we got Jay Station. I feel like I've covered this guy in every exposed or hated YouTube video I've ever done. Let me make something clear here, guys. I don't hate this man, I don't judge his content, but my job writing this script is to cover YouTubers who have already been exposed. So I'm not even exposing him for being a fake. I'm simply covering the fact that he's already been exposed. Jay makes 3 a.m. videos where dark and scary things happen. He also apparently was a victim of a home invasion where he had a knife pressed to his throat and his house was robbed. Some pretty scary stuff. Only issue is it wasn't true. Let's not forget guys, YouTube is for entertainment. Haha. <laughs> and this guy makes money doing what he does, regardless if you like him or not. He was also exposed by the cops for his 24 hour challenge videos where he spends 24 hours somewhere he shouldn't be. He claimed to have had to stop making these 24 hour challenge videos for trespassing, but then two weeks later posted a 24 hour challenge video. The cops investigated and told the news they confirmed it was all staged. Not me exposing bro, it's the cops. In at number one, this man really takes the cake, Patty Mayo. Part time bounty hunter, full time actor. The guy currently has over 7 million YouTube subscribers and makes videos where he allegedly arrests those with bounties on them. He wears a bulletproof vest, or at least looks like one, has a gun that probably isn't real. The whole deal. He even drives a motorcycle so you know it's legit, but it's not. He was actually on the news admitting the entire thing was a production. But like I've been saying throughout this video, guys, entertainment. It's just YouTube. It's for fun. He even said that people on the production side of things wear a bright yellow vest that says film crew, so it's obvious people passing by know nothing is legit. But still, he does a good job making it look pretty real. Kind of like Dog the Bounty Hunter. Was that show real? I never really even looked into it or questioned it, but I still watched it because it was fun. All about that entertainment. What I'm telling you is true. Starting us off at number 10, we got Apex TV. I mean, the guy makes videos about time travelers. Scrolling through his page, you can find videos about time travelers that took pictures of a dinosaur, a time traveler giving warnings about the year 2075, and most recently, a time traveler from the year 2300 speaking out. There's also the time traveler that shows what future aliens look like. I think you guys get where I'm coming from here. But I mean, hey, I gotta give it to the guy, or the people that run the channel. It seems they've been doing this type of content for years, so whatever works, I guess, for you guys, all the power to you. I mean, obviously, if they're real time travelers, like CNN would cover it, and like Fox. I don't know about Fox actually, they're, they're a little biased towards stuff, but you get what I'm saying. Coming in at number nine, we got Zoella. I know this is some old news, but we can't deny the fact that it happened. For those of you guys that don't remember, Zoella released a book called Girl Online. It was actually the fastest selling debut novel, so people were obviously excited about it. And then the tea was spilled. The truth came out. She had a ghostwriter. Is that what they call it in the book world or only rap world? I don't know. Either way, it was discovered that she actually didn't write the book and Zoella herself even admitted to it. This obviously upset tons of her fans and people in general, which prompted her to take a break from YouTube. Thankfully, she's back on the platform and I'm not holding it over her head by any means. You gotta forgive and forget, right? At number eight, we got Chad Wild Clay. 
Now this guy's channel has to be geared towards kids. I mean, yeah, obviously it is. He makes a lot of these hacker type videos and I'll be honest guys, I really don't know how to explain them. <laughs> You'd think it's like someone hacked into a bank account or something, but it's way more far fetched. The way his hacker videos work is people dressed up with the anonymous mask, or at least it looks like they are, attack him or spy on him or hack his Tesla, I don't know. Honestly, watching their videos make me feel like I'm watching a TV show on PBS. But I mean, really, who am I to judge? They obviously got an audience with just under 10 million subscribers at the time of this recording. I mean, it's kind of crazy that they're leading these young kids to believe they're almost like real life superheroes who fight these hacker people. But whatever helps the kids sleep at night, right? I guess. Right? Eventually they'll grow up and learn what's real and what's not. And if they don't, they'll just watch our videos to learn all about the fake YouTubers. In at number seven, Rebecca Zamolo. She makes these Game Master type videos, and I'll be honest with you guys, I watched one of her most recent videos posted on October 20th. Giant Roblox game in real life, Game Master versus Hacker Battle Royale, and I had no idea what I was watching. Similar to our boy Chad, it seems like they have these actors play ninja type hackers that are trying to steal stuff from them. Of course, like McJugger Nuggets, this is most likely part of some sort of series, and honestly, good for them for making content that is like a TV show on YouTube. Again, the only issue is, unlike TV, a lot of these little kids believe it's true. Then again, kids believe almost anything, so it's not like they're doing something they shouldn't. I don't know, it's all entertainment. Mm. Number six, we got Morgs. Now, it seems like this kid gets a lot of hate, and it could be for his over the top clickbait type videos, but I feel like a handful of people on this list are just part of that side of YouTube. You got the vloggers, the comedians or sketch comedy people, the news, the sports guys, the gamers. And then just these types of people. They just, they make absurd videos like Rebecca and Chad and I'm going to say their main demographic are younger kids who don't know the difference between real and fake. Morg's most recent video is first to escape haunted house wins $10,000 challenge and it seems like Morg's and mini Morg's were the winners. So they split in that 10,000 or is that just for the sake of the title of the video? I'm gonna go with the latter. Also it seems like all these like monsters that were in the haunted house were mostly the same person because her mask didn't fit properly. Coming to number five, Joey Salads. I mean I can probably make a top 10 list on fake pranksters so let us know if you guys want to see that but Joey went a little far with a handful of his pranks. Of course there was the incident when he posted the video Trump car destroyed in black neighborhood social experiment. It pretty much showed a car with Trump stickers all around it getting smashed and destroyed by a group of black men. Joey ended the video pretty much by saying all black people don't like Trump. Then he got Got exposed that it was all a setup. He was all over the news and took the video down before re uploading it and adding fake video to the end of the title, which wasn't there before. He then put in the comments he decided to re upload because it's all over the internet, anyways, and he doesn't want to hide from his past, but he's moved on. There was also the time he tried to get Trump protesters to stomp on the American flag at a pro Trump rally. That too backfired with both Trump supporters and protesters literally chasing him away for doing something so stupid. So, all those videos are fake, at least he's bringing the people together at times, right? Everyone loves America. Number four, we got Marina Joyce. How many times has this girl disappeared? It seems like whenever she wants more views, she suddenly goes missing, people talk about her, then she reappears. It's kind of funny how that works. One of the first times she disappeared, there was the hashtag Save Marina Joyce trending all over the place. Twitter, Facebook. In one of her last videos at the time, she whispered, help me. Then there were theories she was either on drugs or being held hostage by God knows who. Even after she posted multiple tweets and videos saying that she's doing well, and local law enforcement confirmed that she's doing well on Twitter, fans were still worried about her well being. She hasn't posted in four months at the time of this recording, so I'm sure people are gonna once again get very worried about her and, you know, say she's being held against her own will. But as her numbers go up, I'm sure she'll return and once again say she's just fine. Number three, we got Ryan's toy review. Now, it's not so much Ryan at fault here because he's just a kid, but he also does doesn't run his channel, his parents do. And his parents and the channel in general are now under investigation after not disclosing when Ryan is playing with toys that are part of a sponsorship deal. There's a law now that you literally have to write the hashtag ad when posting stuff on Instagram or say that in a video on YouTube, something apparently Ryan has failed to do multiple times. But again, you can't blame him. He's a seven year old kid who's just known for reviewing toys. Of course, it's those who run the channel, but still, they're leading young kids to believe these toys are much better than they are. And all because they're getting a hefty check. Jeez. At number two, we got Life of Luxury. They also got luxury pranks, but I'm not putting the same guys with two different channels on here. Even though this leads me to believe all their content is fake because, well, it's pretty absurd. In their latest videos, these things, which are clearly two humans with makeup or masks on, I just call them things because I don't know, like it's a thing. They're attached head to hip like some human centipede type shit. They stalk the pair's victims while they sleep, or so it seems. I really don't understand this type of content because it's like watching a YouTube video of paranormal activity. I'm not really sure who the demographic is either. Like, is it young? 
young kids who believe in this stuff or just like the random 25 year old who likes to do but has fun. I mean, it really doesn't make much sense to me, guys. Yet somehow they managed to get millions of views per video, so clearly they're doing something right and it's working. And in at number one, we got Extreme Games. Uh, I mean, these guys literally faked like they were dying for views and then got exposed by Leon Lush, so they took down the entire series. Now, in the deleted videos, which I'm sure you could find re uploaded somewhere, the brothers Thomas and Jonathan Smith claimed they were dying due to a terminal illness and only had weeks to live. Apparently, Jonathan had a lethal kidney disease and he couldn't eat, couldn't move, and his body was shutting down on him. It's actually pretty believable. His younger brother Thomas said he was dying of vertigo. <laughs> Hold on, wait, vertigo? Let's just look at the definition of vertigo real quick. Vertigo, a sensation of whirling and loss of balance, associated particularly with looking down from a great height or caused by disease affecting the inner ear or the vestibular nerve. Giddiness. So it seems he can't die from that. But the best part of their dying video is that they're actually such good people. They were actually giving away two iPhone X's. So I mean, at least they were going out and giving their fans a parting gift. All you had to do was like the video, turn on notifications for the channel, and subscribe. Then you were entered to win. But I just got a really quick question. Like, I just, just sorry. Why are you telling people to subscribe to a channel that won't be posting any content if you're dying? I don't know. Something's just not adding up here, guys. Wait a minute. They faked their deaths for views and subscribers. Wow.